Happy Hump Day, everybody. Welcome into the Natty State Six Pack. Curtis Wilgerson, Andrew Ellis with you as always. Andrew, my man, how are you doing today? How are the vibes as we're a day away from headed to uh, to Arlington for a big weekend? Well, if from that perspective, tremendous. Okay. Um, no matter what happens in life, Curtis, mm-hmm. the Arkansas baseball team cannot hurt me. They have hurt me before, but they will not hurt me this year. Okay. I like, and, the, uh, I like the, uh, the That's positivity. all that really matters, yeah. you know? But there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that uh, has been catching our eye, and that's what we're here to talk about. There and, is. Uh, uh, yeah. we got some stuff to get I, off our chest. We do. We do. I think there's no better place to start than uh, by pointing out that friend of the program, Sydney Sweeney, uh, will be hosting yes. Saturday Night Live on March the 2nd. I don't really know what to make of this or what else I have to add about it besides um, – <laughs> It's happening, we're, and we're I imagine gonna, a lot of people will watch. Well, and she's doing it with Casey Musgraves, who yeah. I know Scotty's a big fan of. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to just talk about every SNL host for the rest. I of think time. so. I mean, they uh, got they've got a banger lineup going. Did we miss uh, the Shane Gillis so. one, or is it this Saturday? Ooh, um, that's I think actually it's a good this question. Saturday, I feel like we've right? seen, I haven't, I haven't seen of anything. About it. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like Shane Gillis is this week, and then I guess March second. Yeah. And then uh, the week after that, Cheeto Sean O'Malley. I mean, hey. we got, the calendar's loaded up, man. We got Shane yeah, Gillis, Sydney Sweeney, and, and Sean O'Malley. I mean, now, we got the, let me ask you this about Sydney Sweeney. Um, it, I know that this doesn't have to be the case for Saturday Night Live, but it's certainly part of it. Like, is she funny though? Like, does she got jokes? Um, I, I will say, I went and saw Anyone But You, which is her new, uh, I guess, rom com. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say she was funny, but she can be in funny stuff. And okay. So, all right. I think with SNL, it's like you don't really have to be that funny. I'll be interested to see if she cuts like a real monologue or like yeah. what happens there. But yeah, I think uh, I think she'll be fine. I think yeah, when I think it comes to people okay. like that aren't comedians that host SNL, they do a pretty good job of like making sure that they they're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. And what is this movie she's in now? That's just like uh, Madam Web, a which I'm flop, I'm told apparently. it is the worst movie ever. And you know. For now, for people that are confused, and I, honestly, this is actually, I'm glad you brought this up because I've actually been wanting to rant about this for a while. <laughs> I figured, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm-hmm. is the universe that started with Iron Man. That was when Marvel Studios kind of branched off because back in the day, Marvel was broke. So, they sold a bunch of characters like Spider Man mm-hmm. and the Fantastic Four and the X Men. They sold them to other properties. Sounds so like they slavery could... to me, but carry on. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, but basically, it's kind of funny in hindsight. Uh, Marvel offered Sony all of the Avengers for like twenty million, and they were like, "Hey, we don't want any of it. Just give us Spider Man for ten million. In hindsight, the biggest fumble in movie history, because yeah. I think the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe ended up being like the highest grossing franchise of all time. It's even passed up like Star Wars and all that. Uh, I mean, just more movies, but it's this this Madam Web movie is not in that universe. So people like <laughs> think that like, you want to make fun of Marvel movies and all that. You can. This is not that. This is Sony. Who again has the rights to Spider Man, so they're allowed to make these stupid Venom and Spider Man and these bad adaptations, Morbius and like all that stuff. And uh, Dakota Johnson, who is the the main actress in the movie, her and Sydney Sweeney, I think Dakota Johnson thought she was signing up to be in like Tom Holland Spider Man, sure, like going to be in a huge thing. It was going to be this huge blockbuster. So like, even though it'd be a bad movie, it's going to make a ton of money. This is the rare combo where you have the low budget superhero movie. Is just a really tough selling point because like yeah. superhero movies can be watered down and can suck, and I love them, but I know a lot of people hate them. But if they have a super high budget, it's like they at least look cool, and so you're like, all right, whatever. Even sure. if I don't love Thor or whatever, like watching him slice a dude's head off with a th- with his hammer or whatever, it's, it's cool. Yeah, Madam Web has none of it. <laughs> it's like poorly written. There's like a boom mic in one of the shots. Ooh, <laughs> it's, it's that's just tough, like a, dude. It's legit. I've heard multiple reviews say it is the worst movie they've ever seen. So I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna have to go see it though. Well, maybe we need to go watch it together. Um, tell me this: is what the hell is Madam Web? Like, is Madam Web like Catwoman? So I don't read the Batman, comics. or is it? So I'm not, and I'm not gonna. I, I, okay. I've not seen this movie, but from what I can tell, like there's always different versions of things. But sure. from what I can tell, Dakota Johnson's character like has these weird senses and can sense things before they happen. And so Madam Web, uh, and there's Spider Woman too, which I believe yeah. that's who oh, okay. Sydney Sweeney is playing in this. Is the character Spider Woman, which is a that's real thing I in really comics. And I, I've never, I'm not, again, I don't read the comics. I'm not a real nerd, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's just kind of a different character. It's a, it's a character that's been in the comics that. The nerds know about that I don't, but yeah, okay. Man, I don't know. It's it. It looks really bad. If anybody just go watch the trailer. The trailer is a bad trailer, and it's hard to have a bad movie trailer. Yeah. You How have often to... do you watch bad movie trailers? Like movie trailers for bad movies, and you're like, oh, you know what? I kind of 
see the vision. Like, it kind of looks cool in the trailer. Even this one, it, it just looks bad. It's tough, man. It's yeah. Tough. But I will tune in for Saturday Night Live with, uh, yeah. with Sydney. Okay. Well, especially so. Casey Musgraves, who uh, people yeah. love her. Very cool. Very cool. Space Cowboy. Sure. That, or, uh, no, it's not Space Cowboy. It's... Scotty, help me out. What's is it? Space Cowboy? Is that Casey Musgraves? I don't know. You don't know? I thought you were uh, you were rocking with it. Oh, okay. Let, let's let's move on. No, Everything got, no, you said about through. Casey Musgraves, you you made up. Is basically yeah, what you're saying. She does have that song "Golden Hour," though. I know that one. Okay. <laughs> and she uh, has butterflies. There we go. That's a good one. Okay. Never okay. heard any of them. If you heard butterflies, you'd like it. I probably have. I just don't know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I hear I hear music. Um, on the radio in the car, I don't know who's singing it. I don't yeah. know what the song is called, but I hear it all the time. That's that's my. That's why you got to get one of those cars. Relationship that has with the, music today. The whole thing. Uh, yeah, one of these days. One of these yeah. days that'll happen. For a while, my Bluetooth was messed up and it wasn't displaying yeah. that. You don't realize how valuable that information is when you're listening to the song. And you're like, what album is this? What, who is this? Oh, it's, it's nice to true. have it right there. <laughs> I'm notorious for hearing a song. And I'm like, oh man, I really like that. And then you know, I get a couple days later. I'm like, oh, I got to find that song, but yeah. I have no idea how to. Uh, so yeah, that would be that would be helpful in the future for me. Um, your boy, Michael Chandler. <laughs> I don't know why I called him your boy. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, but man, he just uh, just used the WWE to cut. You know, I, I would I would call it a hell of a promo. I don't know how I feel about it, uh, but he's calling out. Here's the here's Conor the, McGregor, dude. Here's the problem with the promo. <laughs> He literally did this like a year and a half ago when he knocked out Tony Ferguson. Yeah. He called him and he said, Connor McGregor, I am <laughs> the most entertaining lightweight on this planet. And he did the whole thing. And then Connor did the voice note making fun of him. And it was a great <laughs> promo. I thought the first one was a great promo. Yeah. Hell, I thought this one was a great promo. It's just tough because like, he's having to <laughs> run it back. But I love that he did it at a WWE show because, you know, cool. obviously yeah. UFC and WWE are now under the same umbrella with TKO. And so we're probably going to see stuff like this happen a lot. But I, I like it. I think. Uh, I think Connor and Michael Chandler will end up fighting this summer. I think it's you know it's not, I can't guarantee that because mm-hmm. there's no guarantees with Connor McGregor, but it does seem like this fight is eventually going to happen. And even McGregor has done his bits, but even he said if I come back, it's going to be Michael Chandler. Like yeah. I, he, I have to fight him. Like there's unfinished business. Got to do what we got to do. Uh, poor Michael Chandler has been waiting for two years just. I mean, he fought in November of 2022, so maybe they end up fighting by the summer of 2024. But we're talking about a guy who basically has just put his career on hold, hoping that Conor McGregor will fight him. And so, for his sake, I really hope he gets the fight. Yeah, and man. I think my, Michael Chandler has done everything you can possibly do to get the fight. Right. You know, and so, you know, good good on him. I really do genuinely enjoy what Michael Chandler has brought uh, to the UFC. He's only been in the UFC for like three years. He, he entered late because he was in a contract dispute with Bellator, but... Good for him. It'd be it, it'll be nice to see him on this stage, but I do hope he gets KO'd real quick. Yeah, and you don't wait two years for one fight for anybody, but you do for Red Panty Night. Red Panty Night that, is real, I mean, man. You just you you wait for it, and whenever baby, you get your shot, it. Conor McGregor <laughs> made us rich. We did it, baby. That's dude. By the way, Conor cut that promo a long time ago. The one yeah. where he joked about that is still holds true to this day because you see all these fighters. Justin Gaethje knocks out Dustin Poirier. Yeah. And he's like, ah, Conor McGregor. Conor. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Ilya Taporia caught out Conor McGregor after knocking out Volkanovsky. Saw that. Ilya Taporia is the biggest star in mixed martial arts in the world right now, and he's he wants to fight Conor McGregor. It Get just, that money, it boys. just tells you. And, and the UFC <laughs> does not want to pay all of these guys this much money. So yeah. it's a little bit. But, hey, eventually a Conor fight's happening. It's, we need a Conor fight. We do. Yeah, I can't wait. This, this program needs a Conor fight. I need, I need the buildup. To an actual Connor fight, maybe even more than I need the fight itself. I would say, so, I would say, yeah, yeah, for sure. Can't wait. Hopefully, it happens sooner rather than later. But hell, we've been saying that for yeah, for a while now. A minute. Um, speaking of fights, I guess <laughs> JJ Reddick, man, um, just a, just a weird beef right now. It's it, it was a beef triangle, and now it's like a like an octagon, yeah, it's or a a half octopus, or who said that yesterday? Was that Scotty? Scotty said something about an octopus, yeah. half octopus, because yeah, he's got a he had a four leg parlay, and he's got me <laughs> got me a half octopus, like it's that a thing was, that normal people say. That was fantastic. He just throws those uh, those zingers in there. <laughs> yeah, but this deal with JJ Reddick, man, it's uh, it's really strange. You know, Doc Rivers. Listen, when 
when the Bucks fired whoever the heck their coach was before and they hired Adrian Doc Rivers, Griffin. Yeah. I just read his name just now, so I knew it it's, off the top of my head for sure. <laughs> I don't think any of us, I know we talked about on the show, like we would we didn't look at it and go, Oh god, oh the Bucks Man. are back on top. This one is one of their our year. first uh, topics of the six pack was talking about the Bucks firing their coach in the middle of the year. Remember yeah. that was like kind of one of our first topics. Yeah, and you come in to me, it, it's even one thing, like if a coach gets fired mid season. I think, and I guess it's a little different in the NBA because of the professionalism and the relationships and stuff, but they would probably have had more success with an interim coach who had been there with those guys all year as opposed yeah. to just bringing Doc in off the off the set, you know. But anyway, he's struggling, and, and yeah, it just seems like J.J. Reddick's just kind of weirdly teeing off on him and pissing a lot of people off in the process. So here's my thing is, look, Doc Rivers has had a long, long, long career in the league and like, you, you, you can't not respect what he's done as a player, as a coach, executive at times. Like, he's got such a long resume. And look, it's a resume that you can sit here and poke holes at. But we're talking about a championship-winning head coach who has had his ups and downs, different stops. But he's had a lot of success. I understand J.J., who played for him in L.A. for the Clippers. Mm -hmm. um, I understand why he might have a personal issue with Doc. You know, they played together. I'm sure they butted heads plenty. Like, if he oh, yeah. has a vendetta, that's a, that's one thing. But when you are when you have a platform, and J.J. Redick, I've enjoyed his post-playing career because I think he's a very thoughtful guy who has a lot of interesting things to say. I loved him as a player growing up. When I was a kid, I used to write. I got white T-shirts, and I would write Redick 4 on them, like on the back. There we go. <laughs> as if I was playing for Duke. Uh, and I would run around. I love J.J. Redick, and I really like you know what he's done with his podcast and stuff like that. I mean, I sent y'all that pod that he did with Luca, and I thought it was really good, really interesting. Yeah. I hate when people do this, when they take their personal beefs out yeah. into public. This is and look, Jeff if you want to just air out your thing. dirty laundry and be like, hey, Doc, you owe me 150000 or like whatever, yeah. do that. But like trying to like cover this situation – which is a weird situation. I'm not criticizing him for covering the situation and covering it even negatively. I mean, we've made mm -hmm. fun of the situation, but it's very weird to me when a guy who played for Doc Rivers for five years and you could argue had the best years of his career under Doc Rivers uh, is just taking the stuff. And so I wanted to read the quote in case in case anyone's confused yeah. here. So, by the way, Doc was there was a clip of Doc talking to Frank Isola, and he was saying that he even told the Bucks owners, like, I don't know what you guys are doing. Like, I, I why are you doing this? Like, he was confused. There's a, He basically brought light to a rift between him and the front office, who he has just now <laughs> been working for, kind of came off the street. And so it's, it's always been a weird situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so JJ says, I've seen the trend for you for years. The trend is always making excuses. Uh, Doc, we get it. Taking over a team in the middle of the season is hard. Just like getting traded in the middle of the season is hard for a player. We get it. But it's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. I, uh, hmm. again, like, uh, you know, you want to have your beef with Doc, like, cool. I, I, I didn't, I watched the clip of what Doc, Doc was talking about with Frank yeah. Isola, and I didn't think Doc was, like, saying anything crazy. I didn't either. Yeah, I, I think he was, too. he was like, hey, this is, this is a harder situation than I thought it was going to be. Right. And, uh, I, you know, when he got hired, I thought it was weird, because I remember Bill Simmons saying on his podcast that he had had dinner with Doc a couple months ago, and he was saying how much he was enjoying retirement, and so it's like, mm -hmm. just kind of came out of nowhere. Again, I think it's one of those stupid NBA situations where they, the player they let a star player make the decision, and it didn't matter if that decision mattered or not. I think Doc is realizing he didn't really, like this isn't as fun as he thought it was going to be. Yeah, they're really realizing it's not as fun as they thought it was going to be. They're three and seven now with Doc, right? Um, which and is actually an improvement from what they were. Thirty and thirteen without him, or something. Yes, thirty and thirteen without yeah. him, and so. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's just it's a rough situation. I love uh, I love that you know just just given everything that's going on. Um, I think people forget sometimes when they get behind a microphone or like they transition out of their career um, into what JJ Reddick is doing now. You forget that like there were other people with you in the room, and so that, that's like it yeah. kind of cracks me up. Like when Pat Beverly is kind of going in on him now, but he caught onto that right away. Like I'm looking at his tweets right now where yeah. he, he responded to that and was and he said, "Hey, this man Doc actually saved your career. He started you when no one else wanted to, and then you go retire, go on TV, and say that." Um, and so, yeah, I mean, he's he's kind of rubbing some people the wrong way. Of course, Reddick responded to that. Did you see Reddick's response to, to I Pat Beverly? I did see that, and I thought I thought Pat Bev's follow up. You know, Reddick was like, "Oh, I had an offer, four years, same money. I was gonna, you know, I was gonna go start on another yeah. team." He's like, "Why don't you take it then? Yeah. Why don't you take it if you hated Doc so much? <laughs> if exactly. Doc's so bad, but the situation in in in, in Los Angeles was the best situation he had. And right. look, I don't I don't have any problem with anything, but it's like, I I think it's very weird when people air out their personal vendettas, and it's like. It strikes you know what it, it feels like to me is like whenever Jeff Goodman does something stupid and we're like, oh, Jeff Goodman, 
<laughs> just because yeah. we don't like Jeff Goodman. So it's yeah. like we're waiting on our chance to dunk on Jeff Goodman. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me with J.J. Redick, where he's just yeah, like dude. waiting for his opportunity to be like, oh, yeah, y'all see this? This guy sucks. And it's like <laughs> p- players do that all the time where they try to like spin these narratives where it makes them look better. Mm-hmm. Like in whatever the context. In J.J., this isn't an egregious example. But we see that all the time where players after their careers go out and they tell you, oh, well, it was, this guy was a problem, this guy was a problem. And it's all under the guise of I was better than I was treated. I was better. You know, it's just like – for J.J., who was a pretty average NBA player, I like J.J., role player, good shooter, was traded nine times. Like, yep. I just think it's a weird weird uh, stance that he's going to try to, like, look down on Doc, who's accomplished a lot in the league. And honestly, Doc has had his problems with people, but, like, I don't think Doc is, like, an asshole. You know, I don't think people, like, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people who played for him who do not feel the same way that J.J. Redick does, and I haven't seen... Other people coming to the support of Reddick to be like, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, you know, I, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that, yeah, that's between them. Obviously, we don't know really what was going on in LA during those years. But I, I thought it was just a little, little bit weird from a guy that I like in JJ Reddick. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't like JJ Reddick as much <laughs> as you do, but I agree. It was, it was, it was a weird situation. Uh, but like equally or maybe more weird, college coaches now are just going <laughs> off the rails dude like we hear everybody Doc say everything these things, is this bad big ass deal <clears throat> college coaches are going nuts i mean you know, we talked about some of it on this show uh over the last couple weeks like egg cooley doing the uh yeah. the rich flex on one like a seton hall student I'm or whatever a- yeah and we didn't i don't think i don't know if we talked about it here but like rick patino just i can't going, believe we didn't talk about it yeah Did it happen? went absolutely nuts we were recording while it was happening that's Sunday. right that's right i was about to say i was like why didn't we talk about it on monday oh, yeah right. he just throws <laughs> his team his facilities everything under the bus it's unfiltered says it's the worst experience of his life and you're just like man like these these things are getting a little bit crazy but it's nothing, man, because, like, you know, last night we had two more glaring examples. Uh, nothing better than than Dennis <laughs> Gates at Missouri. These dudes haven't won a game in 2024. <laughs> they haven't won an SEC game all season. Uh, and they, they have Tennessee on the ropes at home the entire night. And then this is where he decides to drop an F-bomb after the a game. A legit F-bomb. Legit. Not the F-A one, the F-U one. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, what's funny is, like, so when I watched the clip and I saw, you know, him saying, I think we suck at it, we're effing terrible – I didn't know what he was talking about. I, going back and looking at the full quote, he was talking about drawing fouls. Of all the things, we got to do a better F-bomb job about. drawing fouls. I think we suck at it. We're effing terrible. <laughs> We're terrible at drawing fouls, and we got to do a better job. I, that is so funny, dude. I, I don't know what else to say. That's hilarious. I love that. The clip was I, funny too because he I was don't so, know how there was yeah. so much sadness in his face he was just like God, we're fucking terrible yeah. man and he's got um oh what's his name noah carter sitting right beside him and he didn't even budge so you <laughs> know what, like this what noah carter's lack of reaction told me was like that was nothing compared to what was just said in the locker yeah. room which i love uh but no that was hilarious and then i wonder you know if like let's say we were in a press conference and you know must dropped an f-bomb like that um it would be hard for me to not well first like laugh out loud but second <laughs> Uh, just carry on like nothing happened. And he was like mid getting yeah. asked, asked another question, and he just like cuts the question off, and he was like, hey, don't bleep that out. Like, <laughs> yeah. He was like, can y'all write that? Can y'all write that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. Musk would have done it and then moved on to three different topics within his same answer that we yes. would have forgotten about it. But uh, you remember when Stanley Amude dropped a good old shit in the press conference a yeah. couple years ago? Yeah. So I don't even remember what the question was. He was like, "Shit, uh, I don't know." And it's just it's, it's funny every time. Oh yeah, and there's a there's a curse word thrown in a professional setting. It's Kai like, Mitchell's really good at that too. Yeah, Makai Mitchell's big. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but now, yeah, man, somebody it is, else I can't remember. But you know yeah. what I appreciate about what Dennis Gates did? He said, "We, yes. we suck." Yes. We. He didn't say they hey. suck or whatever. Which Rick Pitino took a little bit of. He he was self deprecating a little bit, mm-hmm. but I don't like when the coaches do the like listing of the players and the like really separating between them and the team you know it's like i always like whenever it's just like hey we suck we lost we got to get better blah blah blah. yeah i you know you can say whatever you can say we're effing terrible if you Mm -hmm. say they are effing terrible not good now uh, let me ask you this about the dennis gates thing uh that's a pretty bold thing to do if you're a head coach um but do you think he calculated it by saying you know what I don't have a boss right now because my AD just dipped for Arizona. So maybe well, I he got, might not have a know. boss soon anyway. If they go 0 and 18 in SEC play, <laughs> hey, I don't think he's going to have You have to fire him, right? Like if you go over, so. even I think you despite what you did last year, second year, 
But you can't go. I would almost say them having a competent season last year is almost more of an indictment on how bad it is this year. Um, but, Curtis, before we move on to any other coaches, I did want to uh, pull up. I had the Rick Pitino quotes just in case anybody. Okay. I have these yes. saved. I'm never going to delete these. They're incredible. I just want to give them a good read for anyone that missed it. They got their they got their asses beat by who? Georgetown. No, no. Uh, it wasn't George. Was they it played Seton Georgetown Hall? recently. Seton Hall. So okay. It was. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> but he starts it off. He says, to be honest with you, Zach, I'm just getting ready for Georgetown because Georgetown can definitely beat us. Do we have shitty facilities? Yes, we do. But we're doing something about that. And then he says, it's not the job. You could be at Missouri and recruit slow players. Shout out to Missouri getting the shout out here. <laughs> Believe me, it's not St. John's. We had to put together a team at the last second. We will never, ever, ever do that again. After I spent the summer with them, I knew it was going to be a difficult year. I Damn. knew it, he says. <laughs> I'm hoping we can finish over 500 for the season. And uh, this is where he gets into the real, he starts pulling out the receipts. He said, mm -hmm. look, Joel slow laterally. He's not fast on the court. Chris Ledlam is slow laterally. Sean Conway is slow laterally. Brady is physically weak. Drissa <laughs> is slow laterally. He just listed out the starting five. I was just like, these guys are not good. Imagine how crazy it would be if Muss is like, L. Ellis is slow laterally. Jeremiah Davenport is slow yeah, laterally. At least Musk <laughs> does it. And like, that's what's crazy is like we hear Musk and we think he's like pushing it where we're yeah. like, man, this guy's like really angry all the time. Then you watch some of these guys who just come right. At least Musk hasn't done what you said. Like yeah. just list the players. He's always There's like, levels oh, to this. he'll do what Dennis Gates says. We struggle to defend the three-point line. Yeah. We struggle to defend the paint or whatever. And he'll, yeah. you know. He'll throw him under the bus a little he bit. He will with throw like him the, under the bus, um, but in a less oh, obvious we do the, way. We've been doing the same drills that we have for years when we were yeah. number one in the country, but it ain't working with these guys. You that, know. And that's his way. Yeah. But Again, he doesn't list out the players. No. He's like, "Hey, what's all else doing? What's you know?" It's like that's dude. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy, man. That's nuts. And I love that you know, <sighs> Patino. Like their season has not gone the way they thought it would. It's like a a, a built up mm -hmm. frustration. I mean, after they lost to Creighton a couple weeks ago, he said he wanted to to jump in a river and die of frostbite. That's that's yeah. crazy. Um, and that was and then, not even close to the most yeah, controversial thing he said. Missouri lately. hasn't won an SEC game all year. It's it's built up frustration. Dennis right. Gates loses it. UConn hasn't lost a game in two months, but they go and lose at Creighton, and you got <laughs> Dan Hurley. You got Dan Hurley um, telling a fan he's going to knock him out on the uh, on the way off the court. That was uh, that was an awesome moment to catch. Like people get. I, I want to see what the outrage is over this. I need to get back on social media because you think about like, uh, you know, Riley, quote unquote, like knocking the phone out of the kid's hand man. at the SEC tournament. And it's like, oh, throw him under a gel. He should yeah. never work in the sport again. And you got a head coach, uh, you know, defending national champion head coach saying he's going to knock somebody out. It's a threat. <laughs> he pointed at him, too. He pointed the guy out. He's yeah, like, you, dude. I'm knocking you out. Uh, yeah, that was I mean, funny, man. They got blasted by Creighton, by the way. But yeah, they did get blasted by Cl by Creighton, which uh, helped fund our, our beers in Arlington this weekend. Yes, how about yes, that? It did. <laughs> um, Baylor did not want to help fund our beers in Arlington. I don't know what what went on there. They no, just decided San Diego State. We got to stop betting against BYU, dude. We have to stop. Yeah, we're like we're like one and nine betting against BYU, especially when they're at home. It's just weird. Yeah, you, no, the yeah. Mormons they get after it for yeah, sure. They do. Uh, weeknights are like almost good for. For the Mormons, uh, yeah. So when they play, uh, when they play Tuesday nights in yeah. Provo, I mean, it, that's that's soaking central. So they oh, usually play time. well. They usually play well. But yeah, good on Hurley. And yeah, you know, we talk so much about and, and we joke around about it a lot. But like the, uh, you know, the SEC power rankings of of you know coaches that they were in cage matches. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, Dan Hurley. Um, he's nuts, like, and he's not the biggest guy oh, in the world either. Time. But he, I think he would be up there. He would, he would, if there was a bracket, he's definitely a, a strong Final Four contender. Well, how big is he? I don't know. He's not a small guy though. No, right? he's he's tall. Like, yeah, he's not. He's not know. like he's not a stack house, but he's not a like little right. man. Yeah, uh, which there are a shape. lot of there are a lot of little men in college basketball yes. coaching. Yeah. Um, where's his brother at these days? Arizona State. He's still there. I thought he. I thought he got fired like five years ago. I'll give it a couple weeks. I yeah. was asking, like, dude. I thought he's been like on the yeah. chopping block for for years now. He definitely has. Yeah. Maybe he'll just be an assistant at UConn. And, That'd soon. be kind of cool. Yeah, it would be kind of. It would cool. be fun. That would be fun. Maybe Arkansas should just hire Bobby Hurley and just say f it. We Maybe couldn't. So. We couldn't get the the good Hurley. Let's just. What would your reaction have been? You know, if you were, you know, at this game and, you know, your team knocks off the number one team in the country, 
and you're heckling them a little bit as they come off, and then next thing you know, you just got the coach pointing you between your eyes, saying he'll knock you out. I think you got to jump down there and you got to force him to. And like, look, I'm knock sure, me out then. Knock me out. I'm sure Dan Hurley <laughs> could knock me out. I'm like, I feel pretty confident in saying, like, oh, if yeah, we likewise, yeah. I'm not saying he guaranteed what I feel like he could, and so it's like I think you got to force the issue because if he does knock you out. That clip is gonna live forever. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and then also, he's like, "You're gonna really like ruin his life." Right. That's that would be my goal. If, if if you're asking me what I would do, I would my goal would immediately be ruin Dan Hurley's life. Love it. <laughs> or hey, maybe I sleep him. Maybe May, so. Hey, maybe maybe I did. Maybe I hit him with that Ilya Taporia. Hey, hit him with that comp. Maybe just let him let him land some some kicks early, and I just crack him. Especially em. if he comes to you, you know. Hey, if he well, I would be stands, up in the stands game. too. Maybe if I'm if I, if I jump down. Yeah, you got higher ground. I could hit him with a swanton bomb. That's what I would do. Yeah. I'd hit him with that swanton bomb. Hit him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. Uh, <laughs> have, have you seen? Have you seen these new Major League Baseball jerseys? I've seen them pretty recently. I saw people like complaining about them a couple weeks ago, but I just didn't really think anything of it. Yeah, it seems like it is a real deal. Though. It's it's weird. Like when I first saw them, I, well, I saw the Cardinals jerseys. I, I follow a lot of those guys on Twitter who are down at spring yeah. training. Uh, and so many people were complaining about them because they just don't like uh, the design, which hasn't, it's not that crazy of a design, but they've really changed the lettering for the names. It's hard the, to everything see. Everything's smaller. Everything's smaller. Uh, so I'm looking at Miles Michaelis' about jersey that. right now. Who? Miles? Miles Michaelis'. Yeah. Michaelis? Yeah, Miles Michaelis. I'm looking at his jersey right now, and it's uh, they're little. They are little, and it's, it's interesting. Like, it's a, it's a brand new design. They're calling them the Nike Vapor Premiers. Um, they're manufactured by Fanatics, but. They were supposed to be um, like the dry fit, you know, kind mm -hmm. of material, the fitted material with more breathability. So the guys aren't, you know, going through four jerseys and, you know, July yeah. afternoon Sunday games. <laughs> uh, so there was a, a thought behind everything that they were doing. But, uh, yeah, not only are fans upset about it, but like the players have been getting really irritated over it and speaking out on it yeah. uh, to the point where. And I think you mentioned this right before we started, like the MLB PA is like, yeah, we're yeah. going to look into this and see what we can do about it. Yeah, because I mean, I guess they've got like not quite two months, mm -hmm. but I think there's definitely going to be some stuff. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. I love when the Players Association in any sport, when they rise up. Yeah, they, they unionize and they really. By yeah. way, you know, who's the VP of the NBA Players Association? Either of y'all, you think you can answer this? Uh, no. Grant freaking Williams. That's really? The, that's the VP of the NBA Players Association. I think I think um, Chris Paul is the president. The one that just got yes. shipped out of Dallas for yapping too much. That and everyone a, hates, who's also like 24. <laughs> like has he's, not, a young guy. he's not yeah. proven enough in the league, and he's just a weird dude. That's crazy. But uh, That is crazy. Yeah, I'm looking at this now. So Michael has said that the uniforms look cheap, and uh, Angels outfielder Taylor Ward said the jerseys feel kind of papery. Um, it seems like the material is just they don't like the material as much. The the pants also apparently don't fit right. Like they're not a they back apparently back in the day they got custom pants where that yeah. like fit for them. And uh, they don't like the pants. They don't like the fit. They don't like the feel. We'll see if it's something that they just kind of right. shut up about. But I, 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 I mean, love look, the, I love I Trey Turner. Trey Turner was asked about it. He just goes, I know everybody hates him. <laughs> the end. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> it, it just is what it is. But yeah, it seems like. Uh, so, yeah, so the union executive, Tony Clark of the MLBPA, says they are frustrated over the uniform changes, and we are on the phone with the requisite parties that are involved in making the deci that decision because we aren't. We're trying to make sure our guys have what they need in the fashion that they need it, and it's reflective of what being a major league ball player should be reflective of. All right. Stand up for what matters most. You know? Your jersey. <laughs> hey, but honestly, like, I, I really like I, I support the players here. Like, get, you know, if, you're, yeah. if your uniform sucks – it is what it is. I, I mean, know, they're uh, wearing them every day. Our know? target audience, I feel like they really don't like Nike, so I'm sure they'll be behind it too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Throw out those uh, those uh, Nike freeze, man. Get I, them out. Yeah. It, let's, let's move on to the whip around, but I want to stick with the baseball theme to start. Let's do it. Um, because I just so happened to stumble across the uh, Major League Baseball Stadium rankings for 2024. Let's hear and it. And I wanted to get some of your input on this. Okay. Um, just – now I haven't been to a ton. I'm going to be honest. I haven't been to a ton of stadiums, but I like to pretend I have. And, and you've watched a lot of baseball. I have watched so a lot gotta, of baseball, and I have, you know, I've, I've got sources that have been to some of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you. I guess we could call it trivia. Uh, which Major League Baseball stadium do you think has the largest capacity, the most largest? Seats? Would it be the new Yankee Stadium? It is. They are the new uh, Yankee Stadium is seventh with forty six thousand five hundred and thirty seven straight up capacity. 37. I bet uh, Globe Life is up there. Globe Life is 
Not on there. Not on there. Okay. I, I'll give you. Where's give Minute Maid at? Where's Minute Maid at? Mm, Are they up there? No. They might be one of the smallest. I'm getting ready to move down Who, to that yeah. in a second. Who's the? Uh, so I, don't, I have no frame of reference for this. There are two uh, cavernous West Coast stadiums. So the, oh, uh, Petco is up there for sure. One makes sense and one doesn't. Um, <laughs> interesting enough, Dodgers Stadium is number two. It's okay. it yeah, that fifty six thousand people, but number one, and this is this is nuts to me, given their situation and their attendance. Oakland Coliseum. The Oakland A's. It's the biggest stadium in Major really? League Baseball. Which I guess 50, soon, will not be a, yeah. soon will not be a stadium. But yeah, I mean, huh. gosh, that's crazy to me. Uh, yeah, I, the wonder, other ones, I bet a lot of the parks are in a similar range. Yeah, the top the top 10 are all like number one is Oakland Coliseum. That's 56,782. Number 10 is Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And that's uh, just just shy of 46,000. Okay. It's about a 10,000 seat. Difference there. The smallest MLB stadium. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is. It is uh, Progressive Field, Cleveland. Cleveland. It's thirty four thousand eight thirty. So yeah, like thirty four thousand. So like that's the smallest. So I bet there's just every stadium's like forty k basically. Yeah, forty to fifty. I didn't. Uh, Globe Life is is number eight on that list of the shortest. Yeah, 40, smallest? forty thousand three hundred. Which I mean, is, we'll be there this weekend. Yeah, we'll take a look it's, at it. Maybe this see. just they don't have a ton of seats, but it's a humongous building. Right. I maybe mean, it's just the. That's another thing is like some some places I feel like are huge buildings or huge parks that mm-hmm. don't have a ton of seating. But yeah, but uh, it was interesting. Like it, you know the the worst stadiums in baseball, uh, Oakland Coliseum was number one. Like it's yeah. just a unanimous complete dump, and they're not taking care of it, and they're not going to rebuild. Marlins, they're moving. Marlins got to be number two on this list. Um, number three, no. Oh, Tampa Bay, Tropicana is what I'm thinking of. Okay, Tropicana. yeah, Tropicana, Tropicana is, next. is yes, yeah, not, not different Florida team. Um, 28, uh, kind of interesting Chicago White Sox guaranteed rate field. I haven't uh, been there. I, okay. I, I haven't, yeah, really I haven't been there and seen know. that one. Uh, 27. And this is where I found the, uh, the article and found the link to it. Uh, and I've been here before and I agree, uh, chase field for Arizona. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's maybe it'll be like globe life. I haven't been in there either, but it's a huge building and it's nuts, dude. They have like, um, uh, uh, like glass paneled windows where you would think it'd be a suite or something. Yeah. But it's like a a gym. Like they got like treadmills lined up. You can work out. Yeah, it's weird. It makes no sense. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And a ton of restaurants and stuff. But yeah, like the, the field and the stadium environment itself is not very good. Um, Anaheim Stadium or Angel Stadium in Anaheim is down there. Um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to get to the, the better ones here. Let me scroll. Yeah, Globe Life Field where we're going is ranked 22nd. On the the stadium rankings, so. I, that's, I mean, I've only been there. I guess I've been there twice. It's not anywhere near like. I mean, it's brand new, but it's it's not anywhere near I'll, the I'll top read, of like. I'll cool read what stadiums. it says about this, and then we'll come back with a with a strong yeah. review after the weekend. Um, it says open in 2020, Globe Life Field is the newest baseball stadium. However, the home of the Rangers can't crack the top 20 in our MLB stadium rankings. Uh, Costs 1.1 billion to build but it looks like a warehouse from the outside. We'd be willing to look past the underwhelming atmosphere of the Rangers' recent struggle in years, which I guess kind of factors into that. Uh, however, the food options will leave most fans in Texas disappointed. No, that's the worst. That's the biggest indictment of it. The lighting is subpar, and getting inside does little to erase the impression you're inside a warehouse. Hmm. No, that's 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 actually pretty fair. Like okay. it's, it's such a big building that has zero personality whatsoever. Right. Like and I'm always gonna be partial. Like I, lo- I just grew up going to Minute Maid Park in Houston, so I'm always gonna be partial. But the the gap between those two in terms of just atmosphere, yeah, food, I've been experience, to Minute Maid too. and just looking around. Like Minute Maid's got the train and it's got the yeah. weird center field and it's got the you know the Crawford boxes and it's just like it's got a little bit of yeah. flair to it. And there's just it has something it has personality. You can separate it from other parks. You could take out the Rangers logo and just put in any logo and it mm. will. Like Globe Life is global. It's just a big old yeah. baseball field, and it's, where I mean, it's do you, fine. Where do you think Minute Maid ranks? I bet it's in the mid tier, like probably 15, 16. 19. Okay. I like Minute Maid though. I, I had low, a really man. good That's time crazy. there. That's crazy. But the fact but that, that Minute Maid has the best food of any park I've yeah. been to, and I've only been to like five or six. The Minute fact Maid's that they have crazy. Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City ranked ahead of Minute Maid, I think, is now, just crazy. Now in Kauffman, Kauffman, I mean, they're literally about to get a new stadium just because it's yeah. I don't know. I'm well, not uh, a actually the the Marlins park is fifteenth. Yeah, see the Marlins and when the Marlins did they get a new park recently? I think. I was about to say maybe yeah. it is maybe this it was their old one that sucked. But yeah, Tropicana is who I was thinking of earlier. Tropicana. 
Yeah, it's a tough. It's one. not a good one. Bush Stadium's dropped out of the top ten. It's number eleven now. That's crazy. Uh, but I'll give you the top ten real quick. We'll move on. Uh, yeah, Target yeah. Field, Minnesota's number ten. Uh, T-Mobile Park in Seattle. I've been there before. Is number it looks nine. Cool. Really looks, cool. Not, not to be confused with Safeco like it used to be. Yeah. Uh, Dodger Stadium, number eight. It's just huge. Uh, Fenway Park is one of the smallest, but it's number seven, obviously, for yeah. uh, nostalgia purposes. Seven? How is Fenway seven? I don't know. Um, Camden Yards in Baltimore is that's six. A good one. I agree with that that's one. That, one. That's my favorite place I've ever watched a game, hands down. Uh, the top five, Wrigley Field, I just disagree. I know you do. I just disagree. I, mean, I need I, to go to Wrigley. <laughs> uh, number four, Coors Field in, in Colorado, Colorado, which is awesome. Yep. I mean, there's no better way to watch a baseball game than with the Rocky Mountains I want to go the there so bad. Yeah, Dude. it looks cool. Uh, Petco Park in San Diego, number three. I believe that. Uh, PNC Park, the Pirates, number two. That's a really cool-looking stadium. That, so that whole area, that northeast where you've got like Baltimore and Pittsburgh and you're kind of in that rare. I mean, even the Nationals Park is new. It's not a great park. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably like 24 on that list. Uh, but you just have a nice little – there's a nice little baseball week in there if you play your cards right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Our buddy Robert, uh, you know, obviously lives in the D.C. area. This past summer he was just going to Camden and P he was just going to all the parks all the time. And I was like, man, right. it's, it's oh, pretty sweet. Yeah. And I, I'm I really like um, you know the Orioles Stadium, but number one here, and it's a close. My second nephew is named after Camden Yards. Oh, really? I like that. Yeah. Uh, number one on the list, and it's a very very close second for me because I I really enjoyed being out there. I got to see the Cardinals play there, um, Oracle Park, the Giants. Uh, okay, dude, so the nice, big old glove. Man. Yeah, the, the, the huge bottle? glove and the Coke bottle and uh, uh, the water in the background. Yeah. Whatever they call it, McCovey Cove. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's uh it's unreal. My brother, really uh, cool. my brother loves going to parks. He loves traveling and just going around. So he's like, I want to get to every one of them. He's every time, like, every one we go to, I buy a hat. He's been to a ton of them, but for Christmas this year, I got him this book that is like a guide mm. to every park. Ooh, because he travels yeah. so much for work, so it's like he he really needed that, and he's so maybe. In about a year, maybe I have to bring him on, give him he give his own personal because he's been there to like go. more than anybody I know for sure. Yeah, very cool, very cool. I like that a lot. Um, and let, he named his son after Camden Yards. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> clearly, it's uh, his it's, authority on ballparks. <laughs> I'm gonna trust for sure, man, for sure. It, we're gambling men. I just I yeah. wanted to ask you if you saw this. Did you see Eli Manning's? Um, I don't think I did. Go viral. This dude was uh, at, at a Hollywood casino in Florida. And it was like 2.30 in the morning. And there was just a, a video somebody took of him just going nuts at the craps table. And he, I guess he was <laughs> up like over $40,000 or whatever. Uh, but just gambling. He was, I think, I guess he was at the craps table for like four and a half hours and was just on a freaking heater. Uh, good for him. Yeah. Good for him. I mean, I, I'll get on the uh, the electronic black jacket. Oh, we're at Southland is that where Southland? We're? <laughs> yeah. That was a, live that was and a, die on those five dollar hands. Dude, like, <laughs> see, in hindsight. We should like we obviously didn't work at Nanny State Sports at that point in time. We should have had a camera on us rolling. That day yeah. was one of those like I could we could not have scripted that day or that tri that whole trip was just <laughs> a fun trip. Yeah, the uh, the road trip for the Ole Miss football game was awesome. October seventh. So oh, that date will always be in my brain. I know that was the Ole Miss date. <laughs> yeah. I looked forward to it. I guess it was October eighth is the day that I won a thousand dollars at the casino. Yes. But uh, yeah, on the way home and you just <sighs> caught fire, dude. It was electric. <laughs> Curtis, awesome. I got to read you a headline. Okay, I'm ready. Kentucky couple gets married in a gas station bathroom that turns into a disco room with the push of a button. Okay. In, That's the only dream in Kentucky, right I think. Um, I'm hmm. looking at a picture of these. Uh, Is it an these actual folks. like it's a legit gas <sighs> station? And so I'll, 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 I guess I'll have to read this article. I'm looking at a picture of them. They looked all. I mean, she's she's in a wedding dress. Uh, That's going to be my next question. Uh, like, Matt are they Jones, dressed for the occasion? Not to be confused with football Arkansas Matt Jones or the beat writer Matt Jones or Mason Jones' brother Matt Jones. The Kentucky, Kentucky Sports, Sports Radio. Radio Matt Jones is the one who uh, wrote this story here. <laughs> okay. This is uh, this is. I mean, look, this picture is it. bizarre. I don't know if I can do. Can can anyone else? Can everyone? Is is it on the camera here? Yes. Oh, is wow. everyone seeing what I'm looking at here? Dude. Freaking crazy! I mean, I mean, they got the guy. They got an ordained minister there, right next to the accelerator, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the hand drying towel thing. Oh, oh goodness! I like that a lot. Man, yeah. oh, man, there was like graffiti on the walls that they had to cover up because obviously, um, yeah, that's yeah, naturally. That's uh, that's oh, a there's thing. a there's a button, yeah, that like turns the lights, turns it into a little bit, and there's like a disco ball and everything. So, dude, imagine just. Uh, you know, How flying did they down land the interstate, and you know the uh, 
the gas station burrito from the last stop is catching up to you and you're like, I got to pull over. You go in there, you sit down, you start handling your business, and somebody walks in. You got to wait your turn. You got to wait your turn because the freaking wedding is happening in there. I just want to know how that conversation happened. Like who who pitched it and who had to talk who into it? Of like, yeah, because they look relatively see, happy in the picture. I can see a lot of couples who would be like, oh yeah, it'd be funny, let's do it or whatever. But there's also a lot of moms in this world that would be like, no, not my yeah. daughter. Not no. Uh. When I didn't so. see a ton of people in the pictures or videos, I don't know if this was maybe like it's like a place intimate. you can elope. And it, maybe like, it's a thing where. Uh, I'm going to stop there. I was going to say, maybe it's a thing where it's like they're recreating a special moment they had. Uh, maybe perhaps their first <laughs> night together was spent at said bathroom. I don't know. Uh, love is in the air, and we yeah. respect stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And if, if love is what's in the air in a bathroom at a gas station, I'd say it's a win. It's, it's a lot better than what's usually in the air at those uh, gas station bathrooms. I'll tell <laughs> That's you what. That's exactly right. <laughs> Curtis, I lied to you. I told you that by the end of the show, mm -hmm. I was going to have this airhead down to like one inch, and I... Yeah. I uh, got sidetracked, but okay. I did get it pretty close. Yeah, Andrew Ellis does a, a lot of very interesting things, but his relationship with Airheads is... Uh, I'm, I guarantee you I'm not the only person that does this. I guarantee it. In fact, me and my buddies used to do it growing up, so I know that my buddies did it. If anyone, Anybody else who does this with Airheads before they open it, hit my line. Yeah, if you just shake the hell out of an Airhead until it, crazy. it shrinks to less than half of its size, um, please get in the comments. We will send you an Airhead. If yes. uh, if if you show us proof that that you I mean, do something is, like this, this is cool. So. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? <laughs> I haven't even opened uh, this sucker yet. It's uh, it's unique, and I've never seen it before. And I'm probably gonna do it here in a few minutes. So, there you go. All right. Um, anything else? Good. No, Curtis. I have nothing else to contribute. Okay. Well, we covered a lot. Yeah. Fun times. We'll Good be back stuff. Friday. Sydney hey, by Sweeney, the way, Connor McGregor, coaches going nuts. Major League Baseball. Boom. Let me say this. Wedding actually. bathrooms. If you are a person who listens to this program and you like it and you're trying to convince anyone to like it, we posted a video on the Natty State YouTube channel, on Twitter, Instagram, wherever. If you go to Natty State anywhere, you will find this video. Kind of a little uh, teaser trailer, a little hype video, I guess, yeah, yeah. for the Natty State Six Pack just to kind of show you guys what we're about Kind of a nice little promo. So go check that out. And it's also just a funny video if you want to. I mean, we had a guy, our boy Ethan, one of the Shout best acting Ethan performances Flyway, I've man. ever seen. Yeah. Uh, my boy Ethan's a legend. He's got a bright future ahead of him. He does. Sure. He really does. And so, yeah, if y'all want to go see Ethan, y'all want to see us, uh, you know, just, just being, being in our element. Uh, go check that out. It's actually really good. And shout out to Stephanie, our videographer, photographer. Crushes those videos. I mean, they look so good. And so, I mean, it looks like a movie. And uh, yeah. if you ever wanted to see a movie about me and Curtis drinking beer at Flyway, you can watch it. Minute and a half clip on a. Uh, it's better than thing. Madam Webb. Uh, the much better, saying, much, so. much better than Madam Webb. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we appreciate everybody for rocking with us as always. Uh, for Curtis Wilgerson and Andrew Ellis, this has been the Natty State Six Pack. You can catch us Friday from a not yet disclosed location yeah. in Arlington. Stay tuned for that. We're looking forward to it, but we will catch you guys then.